Hey there, are you ready to build a fitness business that becomes a true income producing asset? Then I welcome you to the Fitness Business Freedom Show brought to you by Fitness Revolution. I am your host, Justin Hanover, and we have over 15 years of experience building thriving fitness businesses, and we are committed to sharing our knowledge and expertise with you. You can expect to hear proven business foundations and frameworks, success stories from our coaching partners, and guest experts to give you straight answers for your biggest questions. It doesn't matter if you have an online business, fitness facility, or operate as an independent trainer, you are in the right place to grow your business and create the personal freedom you desire. Today's episode is brought to you by Fitness Revolution. So you started your fitness business and you've been in the game now for a few years. You might have even seen some good growth over those years, but now you feel stuck. You feel like the momentum you once had just isn't there and you don't know how to get it back. Should you be focusing on your marketing, your sales, or your team? What is the next bottleneck to focus on that will allow you to break the chains holding you back? That is a great question, and one of the biggest skills as an owner is to be able to understand and identify the next biggest issue to keep your business moving. And that is exactly why Fitness Revolution has created our proprietary needs assessment to allow you to quickly see where your business stacks up and receive immediate feedback on what to focus on next. It's a quick 10-question assessment that will be able to provide valuable feedback to get past sticking points and hit your next goal. Whether you are stuck, feeling frustrated with your current progress, or just want to dial in what's working, this assessment is the first step to making that happen. I invite you to head over to the show notes where a direct link to the needs assessment will be so you can easily access it there. Now, let's jump into today's show. Marshall, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend it with us, sharing your journey and insights to help other gym owners win. Thanks. I'm excited to be on. It's absolutely our pleasure. So I always like to start with giving our listeners some kind of background context as to who you are. So if you can kind of give us that thousand foot overview of how you became the marshal that we're speaking to today. Uh, um, where do I start? Um, so <laughs> I actually got my personal training certification as a senior in high school. Um, I'm 36 now. And, you know, I started out just being obsessed with sports and, and thought I was going to be a sports broadcaster. Uh, then I realized I talked too fast and that was never going to work for me. Um, so this started out as a college job and, you know, I got my, my, uh, really just a passion, uh, but I got enamored with, with the science of it. I helped a client lose a hundred pounds. I saw it just completely transform her life and her pers- just personality and everything. And it was really, really impactful. Um, and, you know, I graduated with a, a business degree and, and I thought I'd be like flipping stocks and being a financial planner or something like that. But, mm. um, again, just the, the passion for fitness and, um, helping people just really, really just dug deep in me. So I was like, you know what, I'll go all in and see where we're at. So, um, a few years later I started to faster fitness and that was now 10 years ago. And, um, fast forward now we're a group personal training program with nutrition coaching we do personal training as well uh i've been training for 17 years now uh my cscs precision nutrition and tons of other certifications and uh things of that nature but it's it's been a very fulfilling amazing journey um i absolutely love being a part of this and uh a faster fitness and and leading our team um from you know our team members our members and just making the impact every single day um and enjoying the ride yeah no absolutely i appreciate you uh sharing that with us and it's interesting how you kind of always came back to the beginning like no matter like you tried to go different paths um in life there but it still brought you back to what you originally were interested into uh, yeah. so it's, it's interesting how that works. That's why I always love hearing people's stories and how it, it brought you to obviously where you are now, especially I would say in the fitness industry, because this is a unique industry where uh, I would say most people get into it because it starts from a place of passion, not necessarily like I'm going to be uh, an, an investor or a best business person or something like that. It, it's right. <laughs> it, it's usually sure. not coming from that place because um, it, it certainly is a labor of love. Touche, so, my friend. With um, with that being said, obviously I want to dive in a little bit more into what you have going on in your business to obviously be able to share some insights uh, with our listeners and possibly help them through some similar situations. So let's start with um, 
maybe talk about like some some challenge challenges that you faced um, along your path, and uh, and maybe maybe it was an unexpected challenge that you had to walk through uh, that you weren't necessarily uh, expecting or planning for, and, and I kind of how did you overcome it, and like did it make your business stronger? Um. It's a great question. And obviously over a 10 year journey, there's been a series of different challenges at different points. Um, you know, early on, I just had absolutely no idea how to be a business owner. I, I focus entirely on just, just coaching people. And honestly, I was like a, a decent coach. I was better than most, but like, I wasn't, I wasn't great. I didn't like have systems to, to get people the results. I didn't understand that people like, they just want outcomes and benefits and they want to enjoy it. Right. I, I, um, so my perception versus theirs was a little bit different. So um, I didn't really understand finances and, and cash flow and, um, and 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 investing in marketing. I, I just didn't. I wasn't a good business owner, right? And I mean that was mm-hmm. for years. And we had this like slow build up over over um, you know the first five years or so. But <clears throat> I mean, I, I guess think it back. Like just just my ignorance and lack of skills would be early on, and then being you know, as good of a business owner as I could have been, um, and potentially growing faster, right. It'd been like one thing, but like those, obviously I, I did overcome all those challenges. I just took a little longer than I probably should have, right. <laughs> In hindsight, but, um, better late than never. Um, yes, <laughs> but absolutely. then, I mean, obviously like, you know, th- at every different stage, like, so whenever you add a general manager and whenever you add, um, you know, assistant, whenever you add more and more coaches and, um, you know, then you, it shifts to like, you know, how do you, how do you first start with have, delivering a great service, right? Then it's like, okay, how do I sell properly? Okay, but then how do I like um, manage people, right? Whenever I had like a, a general manager and like, how do I lead them? What's the right way of like, like I don't want to like micromanage them, but I want to challenge them, right? And like finding that sweet spot. Um, something still uh, today, I still, you know, am, am challenged with every single day, but, um, um, I think then like system building was a really, really big phase for me. Um, and really like getting that down, something that it took a couple of years to really, really nail, but it's, I think the level of efficiency that we are at now is, is phenomenal. Uh, and I'm very, very happy with it. Um, and then also what's funny is kind of circling back. Cause as soon as I, I thought I would kind of cross one bridge, check it off. I'm like, Oh, actually I thought our sales was good. I thought our lead follow up was good. And, and, and these elements, but, they really had a lot more room for improvement than I realized. Right. Mm. So kind of circling back and, and it's kind of a, an ongoing cycle. Like I'm a very firm believer in the bottleneck theory, um, where it's like, you know, marketing sales and then delivering the service, which leads to retention. Um, I think, you know, identifying what is the issue in, in that chain. And whenever you fix one thing, then, but there's always gonna be one limiting factor, right? And so always identifying that, that what that limiting factor is and just focusing your, your time and attention towards fixing that. And then you kind of unlock the next level per se. And, and I guess just embracing that philosophy and, and, um, and being committed to always fixing and improving something, uh, whatever mm-hmm. the bottleneck is or bottlenecks, um, I guess it's kind of led to where we are. And obviously the, the you know, overcoming COVID was, it was the, the biggest challenge for us at every single, yeah, uh, absolutely. you know, Jim, I think with it, with it, I wrote a stat, I don't know, like Ursha or one of them places that like there was a 60% drop in revenue or something like that in 2020, uh, mm-hmm. overall, which is just ridiculous. Ours was nowhere near that, thank God. Um, but you know, it like, that was a huge challenge and, and kind of rebuilding and, uh, stronger and better than ever is kind of like the stage that we're in right now. Yeah, no, definitely. You, you brought up some interesting things I want to push in a little bit more to. Um, first, I just want to highlight like what you said there, like the bottleneck method. Um, I think that's that's um, a great perspective um, to put in, in, to remember that. I mean, there's always going to be things broken, if you will, in your business and, and problems to address. But it's about, like you said, addressing the right problems in the right order. Because if you're fixing something that's, like further down the line and you haven't fixed the problems before it, then you're still going to have the same issues. <laughs> so I think Absolutely. that's a, a really great perspective um, to have with obviously managing your business. Uh, now, when I take it back to what you said in the beginning of like how you, when you started your business, you really didn't have any business knowledge and, and, and knowing what to do. Uh, was there something 
that switched in you or, or did something happen in your business that maybe triggered a different way of thinking or different perspective to start um, either like seeking knowledge that you don't know or whether it's uh, getting support or like th what, what changed um, in your path to go from, okay, I don't know business to now like I do know business and I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to keep gaining more knowledge in this area. <clears throat> That's a great question. And I don't know if I could pinpoint one specific, like a moment or event, but I mean, in just in time, my motivation to, um, and, and really my wisdom at like, like just changed over the course of the first few years, if that makes sense. Um, like early on, I was, I was distracted. Like I tried to open up like a meal company when I had like, oh, wow. you know, like a <laughs> delivered meals company and doing stuff yeah. like that. I never had like, like, 60 members, you know, and, you know, like yeah. I had no business. I had absolutely no business doing that. And, and, you know, I was just kind of distracted and, and first like just really focusing and, and, and just basically, I, I just drastically underestimated how much hard work and focus and it would take to kind of like stack and build in time, which uh, it may sound intimidating, but that's actually like the path. If you just mm -hmm. focus, you can absolutely achieve anything, um, in, in, in due time. But, um, I, I know, I, I guess my motivation has kind of increased, like I said, and then I know uh, whenever I reached out with, and joined FR's program, that was a huge turning point for me. And when I was surrounded by other people um, and that that were ahead of me and and were where I wanted to be, and I, you know, naturally just kind of wanted to raise my game and and my, I'm hyper competitive, right? And I want to like kind of get on that level. And God, that was like seven years ago, I don't even remember the date, uh, six, seven, niner, right? <laughs> a while ago. Yeah, yeah, it all and, blends uh, together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a while ago. And, and, you know, I think that was a big jump for me to, um, one level up and, and then obviously the bar just kept raising from there. Mm, yeah. No, Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I mean, I don't think there was a wrong answer. Yeah. I, I was just curious as to like, you know, what if there was like a shift or not um that uh because because unfortunately obviously some people stay stuck in that type of mentality and and they don't realize that they need to be business owners first uh and then fitness professionals second because obviously if, if your business isn't growing you're not bringing people in then you can't serve them uh so th that definitely has to be the, the the number one priority obviously when you step into the realm of being a business owner so I'm always just curious to to hear if there is anything that like triggered uh, a different type of uh, perspective. I mean, especially for like and I'm I was in the same boat as you. I mean, if people like us like that start like like this is our first go at, go at creating a business, it, like no previous experience. Um, I, I think that's kind of like the typical path is like you, you obviously you start out like very slow, like you don't really know what you're doing, and then you kind of start finding your way through things. <laughs> um, for sure. I, I would say, I mean, to try to give you a little more of a pinpoint, I think going into my third year, um, so open January, 2012, going into my third year, which is 2014, I, I, we had, I had some good pieces in place. It basically was just hustle mode. It wasn't like I was lazy or anything like that. Like I was grinding 50 plus a week. I started off as a one man band and we built, you know, membership up to 150 members or so, something like that. But there was something about that year, 2014, where I was like, you know what? I'm doing this like, and you know, I, I was like, I was committed on a whole new level. I, um, my team was too. And, and this thing just really kind of like a lot of peace just kind of fell into place, but it all starts with commitment. And I was committed on a whole new level at that point. Uh, and then again, also getting other perspective as I shared through FR and whatnot. So somewhere around that, that third year is when I really flipped the switch, flipped the switch, you know, uh, and, and really putting like all chips in, you know, mm -hmm. And that's all, and, and I, I think that's important. I think that there has to, you have to have that moment where you're like, okay, this is no longer something I'm just trying to see if it works. It's something that I'm going to make work. <laughs> you know, and, yeah, and, and, yeah, it's yeah. like like the no plan B philosophy, right? Yes. Like like you yeah. let go of plan B because there isn't one. And if you just have that mentality, you're going to figure it out. You know, in mm -hmm. time. Definitely, and and then vice versa. I think if you do keep that plan B mentality, then you're not going to fully achieve the business that you could because you're always going to hold yourself back in some capacity because uh, at some point, I mean, 
there always is a level of risk involved with leveling up and, and pushing your business to the next level. And if you're apprehensive about it and, and or slow to take action or don't take action at all, then obviously it's going to severely impact where you can go with your business. For sure. So now like kind of going into something like the, the marketing tactics, um, Maybe, maybe you can first share like maybe some marketing tactics that you've done in the past that you thought were going to work, but didn't. Ooh, good question. Um, I, I thought Google ads would work and they really haven't, uh, been a poor ROI. Um, really? That's positive, but not great. Um, yeah. I tried direct mailing, like I went all in all on one round. I didn't expect a whole lot, but like it was less than I expected. Uh, I think I spent 3,600 bucks and we had one member out of that. Um, oh really? Wow. Yeah, I, again, I think we. Um, I, I, if I were to say the number one thing that has worked, and I'll circle right back, what hasn't worked mm. it is is for me really understanding how if you're you know the direct ROI like um, direct marketing like oh if I put X amount of dollars into Facebook I got Y numbers back because we have an like, extremely accurate tracking that I've kind of built up over the years so I can I can tell you to the penny what our ROI is and like money in and out stuff like that but. Um, the impact that it has on your website leads and leads that go through your social media and things of that nature, right? So, mm-hmm. um, so even like that direct mailer was was not ideal. Um, that, those were some quality touch points. So it wasn't like a waste, but like it, um, I haven't done one since. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I think social media is definitely something that I know we spend a lot of time and wasted a, a, a lot of money, kind of failing, not failing, mm-hmm. but like kind of just learning, right? Um, because yeah. it's really easy to. to to spend too much labor time on that, that you think is positive, uh, because it's just kind of like a, you know, something you got to do in business nowadays. Right. Um, but like kind of figuring out like what is working or what's not working to the point to where it's efficient enough. And, and we are getting like like a a good ROI. Um, that was something over time. Um, I mean, I I can go on and on, but like, um, you know, I, I think really just in short, knowing what is the sweet spot because I've spent too much on Facebook ads, for example, but like I actually have found if I, if I peel it back a little bit, there's a, there's a leveling point that I can kind of, that, that kind of works for us. Right. But if I double my ad spend, like it's not a double ROI, which would be mm-hmm. awesome. But like uh, <laughs> yeah, when you're yeah. dealing with local marketing, it doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A, we started off like 21 day offer for like 99, then dropped to like lower amounts and, and it did get better though, like lower the price was um, like 21 days, $21 and things of that nature. Um, but I mean, long story short was basically a uh, Google ad, even retargeting ads, YouTube ads that uh, even with like videographer videos or like, like really sharp that would drive people to a landing page and they would, they would take action, become a lead, we follow up and then come in and try to get them in to join. Um, and just overall the cost per lead cost per member was was very elevated. Like I was just looking at it um, from last year and into this year, we're at an overall um, uh, two to one ROI, which is, is, I mean, we didn't lose money, but that's also predicated mm-hmm. on the fact that we uh, have a 95% uh, historic uh, retention, which is 20 month average client lifetime value. So we're losing money <laughs> the first year and will be, you know, from that, but eventually it, it should pay back. Um, assuming those people don't move or anything crazy. So if we just take our historical averages, but, um, so, um, not very time intensive, uh, but, but just overall, just, just not scalable. And, um, and as a fact that we want, I actually turned those off like, uh, beginning of the month. Oh, okay. So it was more recently that you stopped that. I mean, I, I stopped it like two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I thought we were talking about something that you did maybe like a, a year or two ago. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I did it last it's... April until this April. So a full calendar year. Uh, and we're right about okay. the two to one. Okay. That's interesting. And um, were you pretty much just doing like when it comes to ad placement on Google, where is, was it pretty much just the, the ads that pop up in the top of the, the page or were you doing any type of other ads through Google? Um, keyword searching was definitely the best. And there was a, 
you know, I, I kind of broke it down into like eight different groups, like, you know, local um, gyms, more broad gyms and, and X, Y, Z. So I had a lot of like subcategories. Like it was decently structured. I'm sure an expert could have come in and been like, that sucked, that sucked. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but I mean, I feel like I had a pretty decent um, setup and I was kind of copying things that I knew were from Facebook and Instagram ads. And I thought it would translate over there. And it just didn't, just really didn't. But um, mm. keyword searches um, were, were the most important thing. Ironically enough, I like retargeting, we had zero, like in YouTube ads were, were like the worst. Um, and really? again, yeah, okay. yeah, ironically. And, and there were some again, like um, th- that, and there was a couple of months there where it was like, wow, this is really good. But then other months it would be like $200 cost per lead. And that's just like absolutely unacceptable. So, um, yeah. so I just kept like dropping it down yeah. more and more. I was like, this is, I, I don't know what I'm, I'm doing here. I'm, I'm throwing money away. So. Mm. Yeah, well, and that's a good point, too. I mean, you have to realize sometimes when uh, it's not good to keep pursuing something uh, at this moment. I mean, it may be something that you circle back to later on, and, and that maybe this time you, you bring in other additional support to look at things to set it up for you. But I think it's it's good to have that also awareness that's okay, like, I understand that there is potential with this. It was, right now, it's not something I can give more attention to. I need to stop this because uh, it's just, it's bleeding our efforts at this moment. Um, so I think it's important to obviously as an owner and a leader of the of the business too, to have those realizations and stop things before obviously it becomes a bigger problem. Yeah, and basically I try to quantify our efforts as best as you reasonably can, right? So for example, if we're like, hey, we're gonna add this element, like we just started adding like a weekly like tip. Um, myself, I'm, I'm doing one and then also um, David, our, my, our general manager, and he's doing one, him and the team, and and you know, like like understanding, well, how much time are they spending towards that? Like, what is what is the cost of that labor? Because he could be doing this instead of that. Uh, and obviously, you have to market. It's um, it, it's you know essential to growth, but yeah. really understanding that because it's really easy. To be like, oh, we should do this or this or this and this, and 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 next thing you know, you're just added five, ten hours to somebody's plate that um, potentially could be utilized better doing something else. Um, and that's kind of what I was alluding to about like social media. We, you know, we tried in the past, like different strategies where um, just a, a range of different things. So like from, from a content standpoint, um, from a, like we, we tried the DM strategy where we directly message people for a little while. And there's, there's definitely some positive where that can make sense, but like just broad general, like, like it doesn't work. And plus Instagram like blocks you after a while, uh, the, the cappy yeah. and stuff like that, you know, the Gary Vaynerchuk method. Um, so we just try to range of different things. And, and I think ultimately, like when you can quantify what is working and really understand like why you're growing or why you're being successful, uh, I think um, that is, is mission critical. Um, and, and that's whenever you, you gain that, that level of like control over your business um, and, and, you know, or you as your team gain that level of control, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. I think, I think that's, that's crucial to to be able to continue to make better decisions because I think that's I mean that's what business is essentially is just collecting data and, and getting better at making decisions from that data and and obviously the, the more you can keep doing that and dialing it in the better the results are going to be and it doesn't mean that everything's always going to go perfectly but it, it just means that you're going to be able to make adjustments better with the information that you get back um, and and there's nothing out there that's always going to be a hundred percent on the mark yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was there's Not never, happening. there's never like a, ah, I got to figure it out moment because as soon as you got to figure it out, yeah. something's changing, ad costs are rising or whatever the case is. So it, it's a, yeah. it's a roaming target, but like, but, but by quantifying it, by pausing and reflecting and, and being objective, uh, it makes you just, just want to test new things, but also let go of things that, that, um, aren't the best use of you or your team's time. Mm. Or resources. Yeah, no, that's very true. And, and I, I think you brought up a good point there too. I think a flip side of this, like if you're listening, list, if you're someone that's listening that you feel you do have a good traction channel right now and it's cruising for you, that's great, but don't sit on that. Like, don't think that it's going to keep working for the next year, two years, three years. You should always be like keeping that channel going, but also then uh, almost like uh, split testing another channel against it and, and seeing if you can find a better way or find another way that works just as well. And great. Now you have two ways that work. Um, so I think that's a, a good point. You can't just sit back on that and thinking that it's always going to that's how it's always going to be um, because that's un- obviously unfortunately not how it goes. 
Um, well said. So now, what are some things that are, when it comes to the marketing realm now, that are, are working for you uh, and maybe stuff that you're doing at, at the moment? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, we have a pretty, pretty good social media presence, I would say, organically speaking. Um, and we've kind of had that, that system in place and um, our general manager, David, just crushes with that. He does a great job and gets help from a photographer. Uh, we have our head coach is uh, Mac is a boss and he makes great videos. So they're very dynamic. And um, I think that's awesome. But like we from a percentage of our overall members is probably like maybe 10 percent comes from there. Um, mm-hmm. The you know, we, we if I had to kind of rank in order, it's probably the most viable way I could answer your question, I guess. If I had to rank in order um, our lead sources to how we get our members, it'd be like this. Um, number one is website or more passive leads, like people that just like, you know, reached out to us, right? Um, former members that come back, things of that nature. Uh, but the main key is they heard about us somewhere else or they saw us and were reminded somewhere else. So that's very, very important to break down. It's not like my website is just so good. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's They heard, they, <laughs> they just happened to like go on there, right? And just happened to search for it. Yeah. Um, so website number one slash passive leads. Uh, number two would be um, our Facebook ads, Facebook, Instagram ads. Instagram has been doing really well for us. Um, our six week transformation challenges, um, which we run three times a year would be our third one. And then we have um, our social media organically would probably be number four. And I'm always testing something, right? Um, and and, mm. and it's, it's easy to, to oversimplify, but like when we do like referral challenges or, you know, different, different we do lots of cool events like we bring djs once a quarter we go do outdoor workouts we do um community events and and I, again all that just brand awareness and and uh the community building efforts that we do i think really helps snowball a lot of referrals as well which show up on our website so um does that kind of make sense the way i frame that yeah yeah, no, definitely. And I, I think it's great that you obviously have different layers and dimensions to your marketing plan. Uh, again, like you're not just going at it from like, okay, I got to find that one path that works. It's like, no, we have, you know, obviously, you, you have your website, you have uh, organic uh, social media, you have the paid ads, uh, you have the in person events that you're doing or internal channels. Uh, and, and like, to uh, have to have a solid business, like that's what you need, like you need those different channels firing, because obviously, not not all of them are going to be working all the time. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, with the, uh, let me uh, talk on like, do you do a referral system? Yeah, we do. Um, our ongoing one is give 40, get 40. So if, if somebody comes in, uh, and they refer somebody else, they can like their friend gets a $40 discount and then they get a $40 discount as well. Um, and that's going pretty well for us. We used to do like a $50 membership credit, um, towards, like supplements or something like that, like forever ago. And we didn't feel like it was, it was um, a strong enough offer. Um, so like that would be the main like offer per se. And we used to do like, like, Hey, if you get, we'll give you a shaker bottle. If you fill this out, we did that for a period of time and had some moderate success, but it's actually one of the things that we're working towards this quarter to kind of just keep a little more top of mind and, and uh, deliver a little bit different way. But, um, but yeah, that's our, our general system. Uh, and I would say, just through again just bring it up on a regular basis doing random campaigns um especially our transformation challenges we get a lot of referrals through that channel um but Mm. yeah yeah no i think you hit hit it right on the head there is that it's consistency and how often you bring it up and i think that's probably like always the biggest challenge when it comes to like referral systems is just remembering to do it and doing it consistently uh because a lot of times it's as simple as asking a question like after a consultation like yeah but obviously if, if you don't do it then then you don't get the answer yeah <laughs> you know, so it's sometimes it's it's not always uh about uh creating some amazing incentive it's just about remembering to ask the question <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. awesome um so now you mentioned earlier that you have obviously you do really well in the retention category um so could you shed some light on um what it is that you're doing and was that always a strength for you or did was that an issue at some point and then you fixed it through obviously what you're doing now retention's always been a strength of ours um i think it's because i was so obsessed with like 
having the absolute best program in the world. Like I was so focused on being the best trainer and best coach and ha- making the best program. I just thought it would fix everything. Uh, new flash. It doesn't <laughs> so you had to market and sell yeah. and do all the other things. Right. Um, but, uh, in the process, we made a great program and, um, we've had a 95% or better retention rate every single year besides 2020. Um, uh, last year we were, right about there. But yeah, we always average at like right about 95%. Um, so what do we do? We deliver a great program. We have an gr- amazing community called the Faster Fam. Um, we're definitely blessed to have some amazing members that have been around literally some for nine plus years um, or 10. We have one for 10. And, um, you know, we, we make sure to check in with people if like they, they missed a week, um, you know, we'll reach out to them. And, and you know, we like do some of the like uh, the obvious stuff, you know what I mean? Just making sure people are coming consistently, things of that nature. Uh, we're, we're really, really different from most places. Our nutrition program is incredibly robust. I mean, we have like like meal plans, uh, we have an in-body and we like do all kinds of, of things like that, that much more than just training. And so it's a very comprehensive program. Um, so I think, I don't know, I, I feel like we just blow people away with value and, 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 to do things like monthly goal settings, always try to keep them motivated and get these six week transformation challenges. So they're always motivated. They're always excited. And then they're also looking forward to, to, um, seeing their friends at workouts because, you know, um, staff can only do so much, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. ultimately at the end of the day, like, like it, they, they come here I always say they come to us to get results because whatever they're doing isn't working or they want six months of progress in six weeks. But then when they just get embedded in our, uh, in the fabric of our community, um, like that's what really makes people want to stay. And this obviously our, our sessions are all amazing. It's a great experience and um, they're a lot of fun uh, and, and super effective, but um, it's, I feel like the, the, the combination of all those factors um, lead to that 90, if I had to guess. Yeah, no, that makes uh, definitely complete sense. I mean, that, that is, I mean, obviously, first and foremost, is you have to have a good product. Uh, I and mean, that has, that should be without saying, I mean, if anybody listening, it doesn't, I mean, that should be your first priority is getting that fixed. Because, I mean, you can have the best sales and marketing, but it's not going to do any good if you're constantly losing people. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, maybe you can shed some light on because like, if, that is an area that people will struggle with, like the the intro offer, say, especially like your six week program. Um, people will get people excited and get people into that. And then afterwards, it's kind of like pff, they drop off. Um, so like maybe you can sh- share a little bit like what, what are you doing to make sure that that six week program isn't it? It's a great question. Um, <clears throat> So we, we changed the offer and, and have different things going on, but, um, our, our philosophy is always just to make it like a no brainer to take the next step, mm. you know? And, and so like, we'll give them like a special surprise. They, when they like the nutrition coaching session, like in the middle of the challenge, we'll say, Hey, if you decide to join, then we'll hook you up with, um, with this and this. And you know what I mean? Then basically it incentivizes them to, to want to continue on, uh, afterwards. Now, if they don't like, like your program, then like, it's not going to happen. But, yeah. um, um, and it seems to be challenged a little bit different than how we do it with like a normal me- member is actually a pretty different path. So we normally have an, an initial coaching session, um, with people before they do their first session. That's very unique. Um, but what can we do the same thing there? We'll, get, we'll basically give them like a, like a thank you gift for, for joining on day one and just kind of making it like a no brainer for them to want to continue on um, after their first 21 or 28 or however many day trial membership that they have. Um, because what we found is if, if they don't join on day one, there's like a 15% closing rate for, for us. And we at different points have had, like before we started doing that, we, we had a, a 50% closing rate, but, um, mm you know, just getting people to understand like, like why they are, like why they reached out to you and, and getting them excited and motivated and setting a goal, uh, recognizing that 21 days isn't going to do anything, you know, for them. Right. Like it's like, they, they can make some really good progress in, you know, three to six weeks, but ultimately the real problem is, 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 you're not in a routine that, that is, is keeping you motivated, that makes you look forward to your workouts, that's motivating you to want to eat healthy, uh, and ultimately not looking and feeling as good as, as, as you deserve. And so, um, again, it's kind of like, how do we make it a no brainer for them to want to continue on? And we've built our whole, um, training program, but also sales program, um, 
or still system kind of like around that philosophy um, and to make it just a complete win, win, win. So people are like, yeah, I'm doing that. So. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, obviously it's uh, an irresistible offer uh, and, and that's important. And also that means too, that you guys understand who you're serving because uh, if the offer isn't in alignment with who you're serving, then it's obviously it's, it's not going to be irresistible to them. Right. It's, it's not going to be hitting the mark. So I think that that brings us back then to, understanding your your foundations of your business and like who your client is and what your core offer is and like those are all things that need to be addressed uh because obviously i mean if i mean if you're not making it easy for people to do business with you then they won't do business with you <laughs> yeah well i think um, like the way you phrase like the irresistible offer is definitely a great way to to phrase it but like it doesn't stop like with the, the ad right they don't, that, like that's that's not where it ends. Every single step no. of the way, it needs to be irresistible. Every single step, you know what I mean. And and if you just kind of use that mentality, and then again, bottleneck assessment, and just address it across the board, uh, I think that's definitely really impactful uh, on anyone's business. Definitely, yeah. Because I mean, that's I think that's going to put you like when you're looking at it from that perspective, you're going to be looking from the perspective of the client and how they're going through this process, and, and like also what type of an experience is it creating for them along the way, right? Uh, and, and that all goes into how you present the offer and obviously the type of offer, um, and and like I said, just your interactions in general. Um, it, it all has a, an effect on that. Now, do you have you had to have any adjustment to? what you do to maybe like to keep like maybe longer term clients, like still engaged and interested, like people who've been there a year plus. Um, that's a great question. And it really is case by case basis. Right. Um, so some of the things we do, is, uh, a monthly goal setting, even with, you know, in a group program, right. Imagine 24 or 30 people standing, uh, and, and we go down and ask people questions and in our app or messaging them and ask some questions too, in case they weren't at the session. And, you know, we, we think it's important to pause and ask yourself, like, what is your goal for the next month? Um, and you know, what happens is, is a lot, I, half people are like, ah, that's what I maintain, ah, that's what I maintain. But you know, you never know when, when, if you can get someone to pause and just reflect on that, like, like, am I good? Like, am I exactly where I want to be? Or is this the month I want to turn it on? And I think that, that, that thought process, um, helps a lot of people because I think people maintain a lot more months than, than the average fitness person would, would like their goal is just to maintain a lot more months than the average fitness person would, would, you know, assume, but, uh, and they're not gonna make progress as many months as, as they would, as, as I would have thought before, Does that makes sense. But, um, you know, a yeah. few months a year, they were going to go all in, they're going to rock it out. And so I think that again, since we transformation challenges, what works for us, um, and we, you know, we do them three times a year and, and it gives people the opportunity to say, you know what, all right, I'm ready to like go all in with my nutrition. Also, they also get hyper motivated with their training and, mm. you know, um, and that helps them lock in, but you know, for other clients, when you hear about that year long mark, a lot of times there's like a, again, an inflection point either, or there's almost a fork in the road, I should say, like either they want to start getting stronger. And that's where like, you know, if you walk in here, you're going to see eight squat racks with, um, if we do deadlift squats, everything like that. So it's not like it's, you know, like 40 pound max or like resistant bands only like, like, you know, we, you have the chance to, to focus in on more of a strength goal or a body sculpting type goal. Um, you know, uh, it really just depends on, on what your goal is. And so, so I would say that would be one camp. Uh, but then there's a lot of people that are just like, enjoy the workouts and they just want to turn it on for, you know, three, four months a year and like kind of stay in their like happy place and, and they're just happy about it. Right. So, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes. Well, I mean, I, again, I, I don't think there was a wrong answer. just want to hear what your take was. Um, and if you've seen like any trends with people that have been with you longer that you've had to address um, versus somebody who's been with you one to three months or one to six months. Um, but uh, I mean, I love your take on it as I like keep bringing it back to something to strive for and work towards. I mean, that is, I mean, essentially, I mean, what we, 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 we all do better when we have something that we're working towards. Uh, so I, I think when you, again, and 
make it about that rather than just fitness, uh, it makes it easier for people to keep looking at it one month at a time um, and and keep it going rather than, oh my God, I have to just keep doing this the rest of my life. Like, <laughs> for sure. Uh, it, it, it can be very overwhelming. Definitely. You, you always um, need to have some carrot in front of you to chase, right? The process, mm. I forgot what the study was I, I was reading, but they were talking about how like the, um, the satisfaction gained from, from just the process is, is like higher than the actual achievement. Like, like when you're being like, you know, let's say a marathon or something like that. Right. It's like knowing you have this, and this is something that's motivating you. And, um, kind of like the Tony Robbins line, but like, you want to know the secret to mm. happiness. It's, it's progress. And it's because you feel like you're working towards something. Right. And if you're just showing up and like, like going through the motions, like that's not, that's not a ton of fun. So we used to set like individual goals, every workout and they're like super simplified. Right. Um, yeah, but, you know, I think we, we found that strength is kind of like that answer for us. Um, but for some people that's, that's not their bag and that's totally cool, you know? So maybe just for them showing yeah. up three times a week and, and hanging out with their friends and getting their sweat on and, and saving three hours a week is like, like motivates them. And that's, and that works for them works for us, you know? Yeah, well, that's a good point. I mean, who are we to judge? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's at the end of the day, we're here to just provide what they want. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and if that's what they want, that's fantastic. Right. Um, but but we, so, I mean, we, we, we did here. our job, really. Yeah. It, well, you know what I mean? exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we I mean, did our job, and that's why you, you can't. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't, we, we can't forget that at the end of the day is like, we're here to serve them, not necessarily put our agendas on them. Um, so I think that's a, that's a great point to, to remember when it comes to just serving your clients, um, in all aspects. Um, it, but, uh, Marshall, I mean, this has been a fantastic conversation and it's been great, uh, diving into your journey and like, kind of like sharing and uncovering some of the things that have been working and what hasn't been working for you. So we are definitely appreciative of that uh now before we close out i like ending with the conversation or the question that i mentioned to you earlier if uh a gym owner came to you looking for some type of guidance or mentorship based on your background what do you feel is the most important thing for them to hear get your service to 80 percent where you want to be start to build systems and remember marketing will always be your bottleneck always. Mm -hmm. So the sooner you can start focusing your time, energy and resources on that, the faster you will grow, your team will grow and the bigger impact you'll be able to make. Love it. I think that's a, a powerful way to end this amazing conversation. And uh, Marshall, thank you again so much for your time and also your, I mean, your dedication to your craft, uh, your clients, uh, and, and how you're making a positive impact in this industry. Thank you very much. And if anybody would like to connect with you beyond this uh, conversation and have like questions or want to like pick your brain or uh, whatever the case may be. Um, what's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah, I'd say uh, my Instagram. Um, so it's at Marshall with two L's underscore Ray underscore FF. Um, yeah, hit me up and uh, love to help any way I can. Excellent. And again, as we always say, I hope you guys do and we encourage you to reach out because that's how opportunities are created when you, you step out and, and, and do something as simple as uh, connect with somebody, introduce yourself, um, or ask a simple question. Uh, but, uh, with that being said, I was like, the last thing I'd like to do is obviously thank you, the listener, because without you, we wouldn't have a show. And I'm happy that you're looking for ways and resources to improve and grow your business. It's something that's, uh, we can never stop doing. And, as I always say too, I like to make sure that like, again, don't let this become something that just collects digital dust. Uh, if you have to re-listen to this conversation, take notes and create some action steps that you're going to do to apply from this conversation. You can learn from everything, but it only matters if you actually apply it and use it. Uh, and now I look forward to having you join us on the next episode of the fitness business freedom show. Thank you so much and take care. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode on the Fitness Business Freedom Show. On behalf of Fitness Revolution and myself, we are thrilled you are looking for ways and resources to move your business forward, and we are honored to be that source for you. If you'd like to receive more business building support from us, be sure to head over to the show notes and join our subscriber list and stay on top of all the industry insights that matter most to you. Now, before I close out today's show, 
If you found this episode beneficial in any way, I just ask you to leave us a simple review to help other gym owners find us and discover this show. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next episode of the Fitness Business Freedom Show.